Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models, and I'm finally finished Tank Girl. This is part two, and it's time to get some paint down. So, what color palette am I actually going to use for this fantastical sort of thing? Well, I wanted to go with the most outrageous colors, so I started with the gun, with the barrel and the mantlet, painting it yellow, and the gun itself, the barrel, in purple. How do you make purple? Blue and red. So... Uh, the other thing that was going to stand out, of course, was that missile that I got from, I don't know what kit I got that from in the end, I think it's from a Chinese APC. So I decided to leave that in that red colour, I did highlight it a little bit, and uh, that red colour is traditionally, or, or um, the trademark name for it is Dog Cock Red. I, th I think that's how it's, how, it's, how it's called. Anyway, moving on to some chipping. So this yellow worked with the light red primer that I used, this Steiner Res primer. Uh, and I did the whole turret in this, uh, it's more of a brown than a red. And yeah, it didn't really work. I, I tried laying down sort of a, a faded green, Russian sort of green thingy from the 60s or 70s, whatever they use. And in fact, they still pretty much use it today. Um, yeah, and it just it just didn't really work. It was just too insipid and it just too bleh. And I tried, well, maybe I'll make it a multi-camouflage. I'll add a bit of blue-green sort of splotches and, and stuff. And that's what I've done here. And, yeah, maybe even a bit, a bit of yellow. I saw that in some Syrian tanks. But once I did the, the chipping, and I got a bit too aggressive there, as you can see, it's just not working. The, the, the light brown, you know, not quite red undercoat just wasn't working. So I switched it out. I went for a mahogany primer. So I covered the whole thing in this dark mahogany very dark brown bordering on black and yeah i i went and saw one of uncle night shifts uh videos and where he did a, a green and he recommended spraying an undercoat of white first on the uh under underneath your green and i made a more vibrant uh batch of green using those tamiya colors and as you can see yeah it came out a lot better it's really popping straight away and I did a bit of post shading uh, with a slightly darker version of that mix, leaving out a bit of the yellow, just to do some of the uh, the shadows and so forth. But when I started doing the chipping, that's when it all started to come uh, to the fore. So the contrast really popped. You can see those big chips, the real nice dark metal color underneath that uh, can be enhanced with rust effects and so forth if you want. So this was definitely not a, a failure. I thought this was it was good to, to try it again and do a different color. And this is a little tip I use for doing scratches, doing longitudinal scratches. Use your paint stirring stick and you can make some really nice long scratches. But the whole thing wasn't going to be painted in green, in Russian green. I wanted, because it's all made of parts of other things. Uh, and this is an M1 Abrams uh, cupola. I, uh, yeah, and, and also the schnorkel. I painted them in a desert yellow. So uh, again, using that same mahogany primer with the, the hairspray chipping, yeah, I think it's going to come out really, really well. So you get that you know, vibrant, or well, not quite vibrant yellow, but you get a much more better uh, yellowy sort of olivey thingy. I don't know what color you call that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when I chip that back and get rid of that silly putty, you're looking at a really nice contrast again. So the, the dark brown, very dark brown with the yellow, those chips stand out quite a lot. And I'm using my little stabby brush there, which is really good. The underside of the hatches, of course, have to be an off-white sort of color, and I just did that straight over the mahogany brown again and chipped them back. For the other pieces, well, this little, I don't know what you call it, the shelf, I guess, for Tank Girl, for her to have her afternoon snooze on on her deck chair. Uh, I left it in the original color, but then I, I, I wanted to give it a bit more pizzazz, so I've just hit it up with some, you know, Italian reds and some other sort of... Um, I don't know what sort of color that is actually from memory, but anyway, looks nice. <laughs> and then of course, this little rack that's on the side that's been welded on, that's from an M4 Sherman and Sherman's are painted in olive drab. So I painted this in olive drab and you might be able to see later, but also the weld beads that I did, I, uh, I actually chipped them to, to shiny metal because that's what they like when, they, when the welds go on. Anyway, wanted to put some more markings on. So on the schnorkel after the chipping, I put some uh, white stripes, kind of like what the Israelis do on their tanks just to make it stand out. And with the same paint, the brush, I um, made sure because I, I sort of failed hand brushing the white on the deck chair. And so I airbrushed it on and also on the umbrella. So the inside of the umbrella I did first. And because I used that decal paper, the the backing paper for this, I was a bit wary of masking, uh, putting putting straight masking tape on. So actually when I did the blue sections of the umbrella, I freehanded that. And it worked because all I had to do was any overspray, I just sprayed again with, with the white. 
So there was a little bit more overspray. Maybe I missed some. Anyway, after that was all done and I painted some more details I, uh, and put a few decals on here and there, gave it a clear coat and started with some enamel washes. I used some variety of colors, some dark browns, and I believe I did a black, just on different elements, just to enhance the the chips and blend them in a bit more, give a hint of rust here and there and some wear and tear, and just to highlight some of the, especially with the black um, enamel wash, just to highlight some of the greasy elements and bolts and so forth, and that gave them a really, really nice shadow. I really like this method. It's very quick to just to put this on, and then once it's dry with that, uh, that clear coat, you can just wipe it away with a moistened Q-tip or cotton bud with a little bit of enamel thinner. Uh, you can do this over a, a matte coat if you want, but it will leach into the coat. So, last thing to do is just assemble it all. So I've got a little uh, bottle of water or green fluid, I don't know what that is, Gatorade maybe, on her deck chair. And I'm trying to slide these bloody tools in, and they it took me a few goes on camera and off camera to get them in, just to do the right angle. So we're slowly getting there, and there it is, the turret's finished. You can see I've added the gun to the cupola, I've added a few parts behind the back there, a spare wheel, some ropes and things. I've got some bottles of wine and a jerry can, don't mix those two together of course, on the side there on the Sherman storage rack and I get the uh, put the umbrella on uh, in hindsight I should have weathered the deck chair just a little bit more put, could have put a few dirt stains or things on it. it's a little bit too stark but uh, there it is I wanted to get this done it's been a year folks sorry about that it's been one year in between videos but I got there in the end so the snorkel goes on and that's just press fitted in so I think I actually yeah I think it came off when I transported it to the competition I took it to and uh, yeah so there it is bit of fun so the last thing to do is to actually paint the tank girl. Now, if you've seen part one, um, this was the figure I was going to use, and here she is here. Okay, and I had to make some modifications. For example, her, her bust was way over scale. It looked ridiculous. Uh, but even after I've done all this work, and as you can see, I've done some filling and, and whatever, I, I don't feel comfortable doing that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't like showing all that skin and all that. I mean, I know, you know, she's supposed to be a tank girl, supposed to be this sexy sort of girl, but I wanted the emphasis to be rather on her, uh, you know, being what she is. She's a tank commander. And I recently just watched a video of a Ukrainian tank girl, literally, where she's actually a self-propelled gun commander. And I thought, nah, I need to do something a little bit more military bent, not showing so much skin. I initially bought this one from uh, MAIM. This is the... Um, girl playing guitar she's obviously she's playing guitar but she's in her fatigues and her camouflage here and um the figure's okay i'm not i'm not that impressed with it it's 3d printed and there's lots of layer lines on it i'll see if i can get it out and show you but it's just yeah it's just uh, the guitar the guitar is fantastic i'm going to keep that for something something else but the uh it's really hard to show the the, the lines on it on her but and also the cutoff points i mean it is it is feasible to fix her up, and you know, it's it's, it's a nice figure overall, but um, yeah, and I think the face is a bit featureless too. It's not, it's not really a good quality one. So I'll put that one aside, and then the last one I found is um, this one, which is I'll put the box art up here because I've thrown the box away, and that is I can I forgot her name, who she is, but as you can see from the box art, this one is. I mean, she's still showing her midriff, you know, and obviously she's got the the, the bosoms. <laughs> okay, but this one is, um, I need to put her together, uh, and she's wearing a cap, and she's getting up stretching, okay, like she's just had a big nap, so that works well, you know, I'm going to put her next to the stretcher, so she's just had a bit of a bit of a rest, so that one's a bit more appropriate, she's got her military gear on, she's got her, uh, you know, magazine pouches and ra radio equipment on, the, on her belt and so forth, and yeah. So let's put that together. One of the last things I had to do is work out how to put the tank turret on some sort of base. So I've grabbed this really funky looking octagonal big chunky figure base that I bought a few years ago. I was going to do an in-flight aircraft on that but I'll use it for the tank. And what I've done is I've just used a little piece of 6mm acrylic rod, drilled a little hole in there and then on the underside of the turret I've created a little frame out of some styrene, evergreen styrene uh, square tube stock and that just fits nicely onto the, the top there and I can have it displayed like this. 
So there's Tank Girl all painted up, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to film it. Uh, <laughs> I have to use a loop all the time now. My eyes aren't what they used to be. But I got a lot of good feedback when I put this into a competition recently from Ben Flood, one of the best figure painters in the country. And yeah, he gave me some good tips for the next time I try to to paint a figure, especially a female figure like that. But in the end, I'm happy with my result. Most of the time, I just paint figures with a flight suit on. So there she is. It's all done on her turret, having a stretch after having a nap on her deck chair. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry it's been so long since I uh, started that one, but here's another one for the display cabinet. It's all finished. And until next time, happy modeling. Cheers.